إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا يا ايها الذين امنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد all praise is due to Allah May peace and blessings be upon the Prophet, his households and companions. Fellow Muslims, fear Allah and obey him. Be afraid of the day when you shall be brought back to Allah. Then every person shall be paid what he earned, and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. Brothers in faith, major sins are indeed the cause of all misery, evil and torments in this world and the hereafter. And the wars of all sins are those that are greatest in harm and danger. Among the destructive major sins are but biting and slandering. These two sins we are forbidden by Allah through his prophets because they saw enmity, evils, and discord among people and lead to destruction. They make their perpetrator regret where regret will be of no avail. They cause hostilities between people of the same household and between neighbors and relatives. They can decrease in good deeds and increase in evil ones and lead to dishonor. But biting and slandering are shame and disgrace. Their perpetrator is detested, and he shall not have a noble death. All forbids the or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids these acts in his book when he says, All you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some suspicions are sins. And spy not, neither backbite one another. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You will hate it. So hate backbiting. And fear Allah, verily Allah is the one who accepts repentance, the most merciful. This verse forbids backbiting. For Allah compares backbiter to one who eats the flesh of his dead brother. If he will hate eating the flesh of his brother, he should also hate to eat his flesh while he is alive but by backbiting and slandering him. When one reflects over this assimilation, it will be enough to keep one away from backbiting. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, Do you know what is backbiting? They said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He then said, It is to say something about your brother that he will dislike. Prophet وسلم, said, Backbiting is to say something about your brother that he will dislike. Someone asked him, but what if what I say is true? The Messenger of Allah said, 
if what you say about him is true, you are backbiting him. But if it is not true, then you have slandered him. Abu Bakr narrated that the Prophet <coughs> sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in Mina on the day of slaughtering, that is the tenth day of the Hijjah. And the Prophet said, Verily, your blood, property, and honor have become sacred to one another. And the sacredness of this day of yours, in this month of yours, and in this city of yours. Indeed, have I conveyed the message the Prophet asked. Therefore, guard your tongue, fellow Muslims, from this debasing sin. For whoever guards his tongue from sins and uses his limbs in acts of obedience to Allah has really prospered. Sahal bin Sa'ad narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, Who protects his tongue from unlawful utterances and his private facts from illegal sexual intercourse, I shall guarantee him entrance into paradise. As narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. Abu Musa al Ash'ari said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, Who is the best Muslim? Then the Messenger of Allah replied, He said, The best Muslim is the one from whom Muslims are safe from the evil of his tongue and hands. Narrated by a Muslim. Dear Muslims, we should beware of slipping of our tongues and do not give it a free hand to wreak havoc on us. For free tongue destroys its honor and causes him calamities and evils. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, When man wakes up in the morning each day, all parts of his body warn the tongue, saying, Fear, of, fear Allah as regards us, for we, for we are at your mercy. If you are upright, we will be upright. And if you are crooked, we become crooked too. Narrated by Atrimini. Ma'ad bin Jabal said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, tell me of a deed that will make me enter paradise and keep me away from the fire. The Prophet said, You have asked of a great matter, but it is easy for whosoever Allah makes it easy. You should worship Allah without associating anything with Him. Perform salah, pay zakat, that is charity, fast during the month of Ramadan, and perform pilgrimage if you are able to. He said, Father, should I show you of the gateways to good? The Prophet said, Fasting is a shield from evils. Charity extinguishes sins as water extinguishes fire and praying in the middle of the night, he then recited the, this verse. Their sides forsake their beds to invoke their Lord in fear and hope, and they spend in charity in Allah's cause out of what we have bestowed them. No person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy as a reward for what they used to do. The Messenger of Allah then said, The Messenger of Allah said, Shall I tell you of the head of the matter? It's filler, I need to speak. And I said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. Then he said, The head of the matter is Islam. And it's filler, it's salam. And to speak is the jihad in the way of Allah. He then asked, Shall I tell you? of the foundation of all that, I said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He then took hold of his tongue and said, hold back this. I said, O Messenger of Allah, are we going to be held responsible for what we utter? And the Prophet said, does anything cast people into the fire on their faces except what their tongue have uttered? 
It's narrated by a true maybe. Anas narrated that the messenger of Allah said, when I was ascended to heaven, I passed by a people who had a copper nails with which they scratched their faces and their chests. And I said, O oh, Jibril, who are these people? And then the Jibril said, these are those who used to eat other people's flesh and attack their honor. Therefore, we should not treat the issue of backbiting with indifference because it is a great sin. Allah says, you consider it a little thing, while with Allah it was a very great thing. Abu Bakr used to take hold of his tongue and say, this is what which caused me destruction. He said this as a sign of humbleness. But biting is so widespread that it has become the topic of people's meetings and an avenue for expressing their anger, misgivings and jealousy with those who indulge in backbiting, believing that they are hiding their own imperfections and harming others. They are oblivious of the fact that they are only harming themselves. This is because the backbiter is the wrongdoer and his victim is the wronged. And on the day of resurrection, both the wrongdoer and the wronged will stand before Allah, who is the just judge. And the wronged will appeal to Allah to avenge the wrong done to him. Allah will then give this wronged person from the good deeds of the person who wronged him in accordance with his wrong by biting his brother on the day, on a day that no father will give his son any of his good deeds, nor a friend to his friend. All will be saying, myself, myself, myself. The messenger of Allah said, Usury has 70 something kinds, the smallest of which is for a man to have intercourse with his mother. And the highest act of usury is for a man to attack the honor of his Muslim brother. He also said, whoever protects the honor of his brother, Allah will protect him from hellfire on the day of resurrection. So prevent the backbiter of affronting the honor of Muslims. Allah says, all you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear him and speak only the truth. Fellow Muslims, fear Allah for whoever fears Allah, he protects him from torment and doubles rewards for him. Allah says, and indeed we have created man and we know that we know what his own self whispers to him and we are nearer to him than his jugular band. Remember that the two receivers recording angels receive each human being after he or she has attained the age of poverty, one sitting on the right and one on the left, to note his or her actions. Not a word does he or she utter, but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. May Allah protect us from the evils of our tongues and guide us to guide us to the truth. Wassalamu ala nabi karim. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa nabi al-kareem. Brothers in Islam, gossiping is, a, is, is, is something that we also have to talk about. And gossiping about others is also another vicious type of backbiting. It means carrying tales from one people to another with the intention of showing dissension among them. Allah condemned this kind of deed when he said and do not obey 
every worthless habitual swearer, a slanderer going about with, calum with calumnies. The prophet said, the, gossip the gossiper will not enter paradise. Therefore, we have to fear Allah, dear brothers, and call ourselves to account before we are called to account. And we have to weigh our deeds before we are weighed for. And do we know that biting is more of a sin than adultery? You know why? When you commit adultery, you can ask Allah for forgiveness, and Allah may forgive you. But when you commit, when you backbite someone, Allah cannot forgive you unless the person you spoke in of forgiveness you first. The Prophet once gave counsel to Abu Dhar, saying, O oh Abu Dhar, beware of backbiting, for backbiting is graver than adultery. Abu Dhar said, Why is that so, O Messenger of Allah? Then he replied, That is because when a man commits adultery and then repents to God, God accepts his repentance. However, backbiting is not forgiven until forgiven by its victim. So what shall we do? The choice is actually simple. It is real battle of confronting our ego and pride and showing humility. We need to start asking people for forgiveness. We need to approach people with humility, whether it is a phone call, a text message, an email, or email, but ideally it should be a direct communication between you and the person you want to approach. Yes, it might sound difficult, but not impossible. We should ask for their forgiveness, and when they forgive you, you will be lighter, you will feel lighter and more relieved. If you think this is beyond you, then you could be wrong, and you can do it. Imagine an alternative. You are now standing in front of Allah, and your account is about to begin. And you look at your rights, and you feel happy looking at your, all your good deeds. And suddenly your good deeds start vanishing and you are panicking. The good deeds are going to all the people you have biten against your father, brother, sister, mother, wife, cousin, work colleague, etc. So we have to start now. We should have a plan and speak to, a, to one person in a week and ask for, for their forgiveness. Maybe they will also ask for your own for your forgiveness too. And uh, we might look at it very small, but in the eyes of Allah, it looks very big. And we believe we can do it. May Allah strengthen our iman and help us control our tongues. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings and accept our good deeds. In Allah, malaikatu wa sallim ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amun sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim, fil ala 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 majid. وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا الله وغفر لكم الى الصلاه